All right. So um, for the Patreon, I, I think I already know the answer to the first one. I'm guessing, so no UFO or ghost stories. I actually have a UFO story. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. And I actually have an interesting ghost story, too. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, if you want to do that. My, yeah, the totally. UFO, it's not, uh, it's not very dramatic, but, uh, okay. uh, you know, it was, uh, uh, I was on a date, uh, and we were stargazing, literally stargazing, and, and <laughs> conversing, getting acquainted, but we were on the, the BYU campus in Utah, and Okay. And, and, uh, out by the clock tower and watching the sky. And, you know, as, as a kid, we often had most of the homes in, in my neighborhood had sun decks. And so we would often have slumber parties, the kids in mm. the neighborhood, a lot of kids okay. on our street, about 39 kids in K through 12 on our street, wow. lots of families. But so we oftentimes had these summer slumber parties and just uh, wall to wall sleeping bags on the deck. And we'd be watching the stars and pointing out constellations and, and of course watching for satellites or shooting stars and this uh, so i was very familiar with what a satellite looks like you know and it's yes trajectory. yes and uh, all of a sudden we saw something instead of kind of an oblique trajectory from kind of northwest to southwest or something like that this thing was moving in a similar fashion but moving due no from north to south just straight as an arrow and that wow. wasn't that unusual except that once it got right over the top of us, and it was just a little spot of light, it made, it executed two right angle turns, just as sharp as if you had a square up there. Just oh man. And I'm watching that for a second and I turned and I looked at my date and I don't even remember her name, but I said, did you see that? She said, yeah, have you ever seen anything do that? And no, I have never. I mean, how, how could anything actually do that? So that was the one. That's crazy. The other one, happened uh, was the ghost story happened up in uh, at uh, in Wyoming at um, John Mayanzinski's uh, uh, place John and I have spent a lot of time together and I was up there and he has a, he has a cabin his own that he built himself and uh, has a little guest cabin for people that visit and it's just you know 100 150 yards down this trail separated from his cabin and uh, it's a, just a little one room and um, uh, I was in there and during the night, I, um, something woke me up uh, or I became aware of something in the room. I thought, now I don't have great vision. I, I, I'm 22,000 something. I'm okay. legally without my contact lenses or glasses. Oh, wow. so, so at night, you know, I mean, I can still see, but at night my vision is compromised. <laughs> if sure. my glasses are right where I put them, then I'm, I'm in trouble. <laughs> but uh, I rolled over and and this cabin has a, has these huge picture windows around the uh, uh, almost all the way around. Well, on three three of the four walls have huge picture windows with no curtains or drapes, and so uh, it's it's pretty dark. But the little ambient starlight's coming in, and standing next to my bed, you know, you brought up Mothman. This almost <laughs> looked like Mothman. It, no uh, way. It was this sort of ambiguous looking rounded shape with these two luminescent eyes sort no of there. No way. And it was just, but and, and the, the shimmering appear, appearance was just my blurry vision. And okay. I looked at it for a second and it was just, you know, two or three feet removed from the bed. And I looked at it and I just thought, it's weird. And I rolled over, <laughs> turned my back to it and went back to sleep. <laughs> this morning, I just had this kind of creepy feeling about it. And the next morning yeah. I asked, I told him, I, I didn't ask him. I just said, oh, you, I had the weirdest dream last night. I said, I, I dreamt I rolled over and I described what I saw. He's sitting there just looking at me. He said, well, you're about the third person who's described that. No way. <laughs> and then he told me about his experience. He had something oh. um, and, and it has deep Indian uh, tradition roots, but oh. something had, uh, well, there, he, there was a shortcut from down there. He lives just outside of, Atlantic City, which is just an old okay. mining ghost town almost, but uh, uh, and there was a shortcut. His his cabin is up on the shoulder of the hill above the town, and he was walking that shortcut, which took him past this big old dead snag of a tree. And uh, he had a dog with him at that time, and the dog, as they approached the tree, the dog started to bristle and growl. Oh this man! Was, and the dog kept watching the tree as they walked past, and he he you know 
called the dog and the dog came along. He went into the cabin and the dog came in and turned around and just watched the door of the cabin. And then the dog, he said the dog's eyes followed something come through the door into the cabin. The dog walked, you know, paced it with his eyes going oh, across. Man. Anyway, that night John had a dream about a figure that was like that. His was a little clearer. It was like a giant owl. And suddenly the owl oh. and in his, you know, at least in his dream, he thought it pounced on him. And in this owl, you know, it stands like five feet wow. tall. And they were wrestling. And uh, he said he felt like this was a life or death struggle for him. And anyway, he woke up the next morning just covered in sweat. His bed linens and things are just ripped mm -hmm. apart and battered all over the floor. And uh, anyway, he talked to a, um, a shaman about it, a, a, an elder in, okay. in the tribe. And, and he immediately recognized it. There's a name for it. I can't remember what the name is. Oh, really? creature that a spirit that that when your uh, life is at a crossroads or or very depressed or whatever sometimes you encounter this spirit and Whoa. you grow and he said if you had lost your fight your battle with this you may not okay. have survived I tell about it, you know oh man so this yeah very deeply entrenched in in their in their traditional beliefs and so so i may have caught a glimpse of of that i i did that's awesome perceive any any crossroads in my life i was trying to think back to the circumstances at that time if there was something going on but apparently you know i it wasn't so bad that uh that it was deemed i needed to wrestle with the yeah uh, right rest, wrestling with the angel you know and the, <laughs> the biblical it, exactly old testament style yeah. yeah uh last last question so when people <laughs> for some reason around my generation we really like the Monster Quest episode when you're in Snell Grove Lake. Like, yeah. it's just, it's something about, it's like, yeah. it's all over the place. Like, people really like it. Do you have yeah. any, like, uh, memories from being oh, in yeah. that, that was, episode? Or That was very big. Yeah. And 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 you're, you're referring to the first one? The first oh, one. Oh, yeah, that's true. We... There are two, aren't there? Yeah. There were yeah. two. Yeah. The first one... Um, yeah, it was, and it was funny too because the way it was edited, uh, and the, the way it was portrayed was not quite accurate, and and oh, it really? cut out really the more sensational bit, and and that oh, yeah. was when when the rock. Uh, so for those who don't aren't familiar with it, basically we we often you know after the day's activities we would tend to stay up late at night to listen for things and sometimes to do a wood knock you know in those days yeah. Uh, uh, do a wood knock and I wasn't a huge fan of it even then but uh, and we we'd throw our our voices make calls because out there on the lake when cold night boy it would just carry and sure. you know it, when it was really still you could hear things on the opposite side of the lake you know a good well half mile away as if they were standing right next to you I mean as if the sound was coming wow. right next to you. so it was really carry anyway one night and that night we heard a vocalization that seemed to be responding to one of our yells really just a just a distant trailing call and uh and then uh, so we would like i said we'd often stay up late around this campfire it was basically a culvert sunk into the ground stuck okay. up about yeah. two feet you know with a rim keep sparks down and uh, i was you know I'm, I'm not a great night owl and back then especially i was uh I was borderline narcoleptic. I, I oh, re really? wow. discovered that I had, I had uh, actually have central sleep apnea. Oh, and, wow. And yeah. Dealing with now, but Ooh. I was notorious. I, I could fall asleep just if I sat still or if I was in the passenger seat of the car oh, or if it got past, uh, you know, 10 o'clock, I would just fall asleep. You're out. Yeah. And, uh, anyway. And so by about 11, 12, I was really starting to get punchy. So I, I went in <laughs> the cabin to just splash cold water in my face. While I was in there, the producer's son came yeah. onto the porch. Yeah. He didn't want to go to the outhouse, which was about, oh, 20 yards behind the cabin down a catwalk in the dark. It's quite removed. And so, and so uh, he goes on the porch to relieve himself. And all of a sudden, twang, just the, the sound of a 
like someone had shot a BB gun against this metal siding on the, the cabin was sided all the way around as well as a corrugated roof. And um, something had thrown just, you know, a little pea-sized rock or something. It just made a ping, one of those ping sounds. But wow. it was right next to this kid and his eyes were the size of saucers and he's hiking his pants back up. I could see him running back out to the fire. So I <laughs> finished what I was doing, dried off and came out and they said, did you hear that? Did you? I said, yeah, I did. I said, which one of you did it? I looked at everybody. No, 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 no. We were oh, all wow. over. I was just, I was just, you know, probing them a little mm -hmm. bit. But then um, um, Kurt Nelson picks up a rock. He said, well, I'm going to throw a rock in that direction. And I jokingly said, well, don't throw anything too big. It might throw it back. Oh, man. So he picks up a golf ball sized rock and he Ooh. lobs it back. Then you could hear it report bounce off a couple of trees and then nothing. So about 10, 15 minutes go by if that much. And I just happened. I was on the right side, the correct side away from the cabin. And my out of the, my peripheral vision, I just happened to kind of glance up because into the into the illumination of the firelight comes this rock. No way. The roof of the cabin. Oh, the man. Cabin, not the direction he'd thrown it. It was off from a different angle, but nevertheless, you know, the coincidence was there. And, and it was so funny because <laughs> like a little line of peahens, they all <laughs> go running into the cabin. Well, and I'm saying, where are you going? Oh, this is why we're here. Exactly. And, this is it. Yeah. And it was funny because there was some firewood, uh, when uh, when the producer's son he wasn't a real outdoors kid and not a lot of experience you know how you when you when a youngster has his first experience with an axe they yeah, chop and yeah. chop, they chop, you know actually they'll chop anything but he chopped all this firewood this little cordwood and, and it was in the shadow cast from the culvert lip i didn't see it as i stepped back i stepped on one and rolled my ankle oh no I, I went falling down Oof. so for me the cabin it looked like i'd been beamed by the second rock or a second rock not the second rock but a second rock so to their credit the team came out to my rescue to make that's sure that's nice I was of there. them yeah <laughs> but then unfortunately on camera you see kurt saying here we are cowering in the cabin i got so much email as a result of that oh. one line what are you doing in the cabin why aren't you out there looking for and i say well now here's what actually happened <laughs> that's well, intense yeah Wow. Now, now, what happened? What what was really interesting though is that that we finally did by about two thirty. I mean, I was falling asleep, almost falling into the fire, and uh, I said, "I'm going to go to bed. This nothing, nothing else is happening." And yeah. we had gone back into the woods. We we had a, a a very at that time a very sort of primitive sort of thermal imager. It was not like the little miniature flares, uh, and in fact, well, the only way we could use it is if a technician from the company came with it oh wow <laughs> to handle it and we also had night vision and we had gone back into the woods looking we had we had ventured out um but uh, uh you couldn't see anything and it was it was kind of precarious because up there mm. on the canadian shield you know it can be very rocky with all kinds of splits and crevices and there's moss covering it and it's like oh, a, yeah. you know you step and break a leg and so traipsing around in the pitch black was a little bit precarious so we eventually re regrouped around the fire finally i said i can't i can't i'm gonna fall asleep fall in the fire so we we went we all decided we'd all go to bed but we'd keep our boots on you know okay and yeah just in case yeah just in case like firemen on the ready for yeah, the right right alarm to go off and i tell you the lights had gone out and my lids were just getting heavy and yeah. all of a sudden Bang, bang, bang across oh, the roof. Man, yeah. This time it wasn't a little rock; it was a big chunk of cordwood from the wood pile back in the back. Oh, really? It wow. Across the roof and fell off the stoop and was on the, on the uh, the catwalk in the back. Well, we looked out the. Uh, first of all, you know, there were screams. You would you would have thought we had some <laughs> on the in the group with us, but <laughs> lights went on. I said, "Turn the lights off! Turn the lights off!" Yeah. I said so we could see out, and they couldn't see in. And right. I, so eager to go running out into the darkness if it was raining cordwood um but still no no sign of anything oh, and man. nothing happened so that was that was sort of the extent of it but it was an interesting that interesting is really cool the, that is cool to hear your side of that was, yeah yeah
Oh man. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Meldrum. This has been fantastic. And I really appreciate you taking your time tonight and hanging out. But um, I think we are cool with cutting it right there. I'm going to stop recording.